tribe, welcome to HDDC, HD Designs Crochet. I'm Heather and I'm 29 from the United Kingdom and this channel of mine is documenting my journey as a crochet designer. If you are brand new, hey, welcome to the tribe. Thank you so much for clicking and joining us here. If you are a returning viewer, yo 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 tribe, what's good, what's happening? Today I am in HD HGDC HQ. I am surrounded by the pretties. There's a whip there that you're not supposed to see right now. There is yarn that I've brought from Nottingham Yarn Show just there. And then here, all of my cone yarn. I've got my sign up there. This is like my Narnia, my amazing magic place. This is where a lot of the magic happens and today I thought I'd record in here. Today's vlog is a about me. There are so many more subscribers now and I thought this would be an impromptu, a really, really good time to put out an about me so you can get to know a little bit more about me and HDDC. So before we get into that, what I'm wearing, I am wearing my own design, this is Promise, and it is a granny square dress, and it has got all of the colours, I'm absolutely loving it, um, I'm working on this design at the moment, I'm going to shorten the sleeves, and I'm going to take a couple of squares out of the body, just so this fits me a little bit more snug, so I can get the pattern out there, because a few people have asked for it, and I've got some testers in mind already, so this is promise, my promise is, I'm going to get it out there. Okay, so I've prepped and I've got my 10 questions about me. Um, so let's get started. Number one. I learnt to crochet when I was 21 or 22, which was eight or nine years ago. Um, my grandmother taught me, my nanny Hendra. If you've watched my Nottingham Yarn Show vlog, you'll have seen a picture of me and her in there. Um, she has been a huge, huge influence in my crochet journey. So my nanny Hendra has been knitting since she was four um, and crocheting. So around 70 years of yarn making, knitting, crochet in her life. Um, and I have always, whenever I visit her, I can always remember her knitting, crocheting, um, talking away with her needles jammed on her arm, knit, 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 yep, 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 watch the TV, knit, 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 knit. Um, and I remember having handmade knitted cardigans and jumpers as a younger child. Um, my mother also knits and crochets, though not as much, she prefers to sew. Um, so I've been surrounded by these amazing women that have loved yarn. Um, and I didn't particularly show a huge interest in it until I got to my early 20s. And I was at uni, I um, studied law, I have a first class degree in law, and I've spent five years at uni. And during my second year, my grandmother taught me how to crochet. Um, it was Boxing Day, she came over with my granddad and I asked her to teach me and I had some yarn and a hook ready and she taught me how to make a granny square. And from then on, without even sounding cliched, I have been hooked. I have gone through periods of putting my hook down but not really ever for long. If you go back and watch my blanket stack video, you will see um, each blanket that I've made there has a story of, well, it shows a step or the story of my crochet designer life. Since then, I have been crocheting pretty much non-stop. Um, I found that crocheting for me was a huge, huge stress relief and it was a great way to study. I would study for 20 minutes and then make a granny square, which, you know, like a three round granny square. Um, funny enough, a lot of the granny squares I ever made are actually in this design. Let's not skip ahead. 
um, I would study, I would crochet a square and I'd put it in the box. I had a Ugg boot box, it was huge and I started to fill it up and they were going to be for a blanket. Um, and I found that it was a great way to channel some of that stress, it was a great way to self-soothe um, and it was good because you had something to show afterwards um, and it always spared me on, do these 20 minutes, memorise this, you can make another granny square and then my boyfriend at the time would drill me on the questions to make sure it was all in my head and I would crochet while he did it um, and I just found that repetitive motion it was really really soothing and it must have worked because I got a really high grade. It's top 10 in my year. And my first project as a crocheter is definitely a blanket. Um, my grandmother said start with something like a scarf, something manageable. Nah. A blanket. A huge king size blanket. <laughs> Question number two. I learnt to knit not long after I learnt to crochet, again my nanny Hendra taught me, however I didn't really take to it, I didn't find it enjoyable, um, manoeuvring two needles, it just felt quite restrictive, it was really slow and if I made a mistake I struggled to fix it myself, so that combined with not making much progress meant that I basically put it down and abandoned the needles for the hook which is why I gravitate towards crochet more than knitting. Um, as I said, I put my needles down until I was about 26, until about three or four years ago. And I decided I wanted to knit and the first thing I knit was a pair of two at a time toe up socks. Yeah wildly ambitious. I did it though. Um, I would definitely say a good tip if you want to learn to knit or crochet pick a project you really want to make because you won't put it down. I didn't want to make a scarf, I didn't want to make um, a knitted blanket. I can crochet a blanket like that. I am not going to spend six years of my life knitting one. I just I ain't got time for that. So I did my socks. Um, they have a contrasting toe, heel and cuff. They took me forever and a day. I think I spent about two months working on them. Um, but I did them and I still have them. And I love, love, love to knit socks now. Question number three. So I have always been relatively crafty or a maker, whichever term you prefer. I've always been creative and always looked for outlets. One of my biggest outlets is writing. I love to write. Um, I've kept a journal since I was 16 and not that you can see them but down there under that shelving is all my journals for the last 15, 14, 14 years. I write in them every day as I want to or sporadically but they're always there and I find it's the easiest form for me to communicate myself um, and I spend a lot of time in my journals reflecting on things, self-development, um, documenting memories so writing's always been a big part of my life. Um, my other crafty endeavours have included jewellery making love making jewellery and up there you can actually see some of my pliers and bits and bobs and in that cupboard I have a huge box of all of the hardware or findings that I would use so um, jump rings, beads, wires, clips, charms, the whole shebang is in there um, and I really enjoyed making it but it wasn't, it didn't hold me as much as crochet and it's not as portable but having said that I still have my jewellery making stuff because some of it I've been using to make um, stitch markers and charms and progress keepers so I quite, quite like that I can bring that into this passion and then my other making endeavours is sewing I have a sewing machine in there, an overlocker in there, and I 
want to make more of my own clothes. Um, so far I've made a skirt, a dress, and I think that's pretty much it. Two skirts and a dress. Um, and I've got the pattern, which is sat here, for um, another dress. It's the True Bias Nico dress. Um, and I have got some amazing pink jersey material for that. And I also have some yellow checked, bright plaid checked material that I want to make some trousers out of to wear with Doc Martens. Um, so definitely 2020, I envisage myself doing a lot more sewing and a lot more making. And also altering clothes that I buy that I maybe thrift or if you're not from America, like me, uh, charity shop clothing that you need to alter to make it fit you and look good. Um, I definitely envisage a lot more of that happening. And then one more, one more crafty endeavour is machine knitting. Directly behind you there are two knitting machines. Um, one my grandmother gifted me and one that the local knitting group, knitted, um, knitting group, knitting machine group gifted to me. And then I've got all of this cone yarn here, which I got secondhand from Facebook Marketplace. And again, 2020, that is another big thing on my to-do list, it is to master the knitting machine. Um, I've done a two-day course with Amber Hards in Bristol, and that was really, really good. And she sent me some stuff in an email. And so I am going to use that yarn and have a go at making myself a jumper and all sorts of knitted things. Um, I know there is a big debate, and I'm not gonna go into it right now, about whether machine knitting is cheating, but if somebody sews clothing on a sewing machine, it's not cheating. Machine, knitting machines, you have to manually, unless you get an electric one, which I don't have, push the carriage from side to side to make the stitches. So in effect, the knitting machine is more like a loom which helps you to weave and to make the product rather than do it for you. But even if it did do it for me, I'm still gonna be putting the design and the work into it. Um, and that machine is gonna knit a whole lot faster than I can ever knit. And it's gonna save my wrists as well because my wrists take a battering from the amount of yarn action I have going on in my life. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm Question four. Here, yeah, what's with my finger? Question, why does it do that? What is that? It's like the, ow. It's like the. Question four. My favourite thing to crochet of all time is the granny square. It is the granny square. I love them. I love wearing them. I love being surrounded by them. I love having blankets to snuggle under. Whenever I want to crochet and I don't really know what to work on, I make granny squares. I love them. It's some sort of mania. I cannot get enough of them. Um, as I was saying, these squares I actually made when I first learnt to crochet back in 2011, 2012, no prior to that, 2009, 2010, and then I graduated in 2011. So say 2010, I was making these squares and I wanted to make an absolutely huge blanket, which I did, but because it's the first blanket I ever made, I didn't leave enough tails for the ends to be sewn in or woven in. Is it sewn or is it woven? Don't know, but I didn't leave enough yarn for that. And then when I put it together, um, I think I'd learnt the join as you go method, but I hadn't secured them uh, well enough within the slip stitches. And with the weight of it, it sort of stretched. And there was just so many ends to sew in because I didn't do them as I went along. So I actually ripped it all down and I kept all the squares and I still have like a huge, bag of them and so some of those I've reached for and I've made into projects one of them being this and I used 
all sorts of yarn in here. It's all double knit yarn, um, but some of it I got from freebies from magazines, from charity shops. It was gifted to me by my grandmother, gifted to me from um, friends at like a craft club when I first started to crochet. Um, I've got it from online shops, all sorts of different places. If, there's a, if there is a ball of yarn, I'll find it and I'll buy it. Um, so there's so many different ones in here, but that worked quite well because it means that they are all slightly different textures because they're all different brands. Um, there's some quite shiny ones, there's some that's mixed with cotton, there's 100% acrylic, there's glitter, there's tweedy, and it really does add to the effect and gives this bright mishmash of colours, which I'm totally digging right now. <laughs> the granny square can be made into anything. I used to make blankets, 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 and up here, I have a stack of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blankets. Then I also have one in my one, one in my bedroom. And out of the eight blankets, I still have one, two, three, four of granny squares. And it kind of got to the point where I love making granny squares, but how many granny square blankets do you need? FYI, you can never have enough, but I also wanted to make other things. And so I started making blankets in other stitches. Um, I've got my Larks for my granny stripe, still grannying, granny on. Um, I've got single crochet, I've got my chevron, and I have got another granny stripe. Um, and then it kind of got to the point where I don't need more blankets. Um, what am I gonna make? Um, so if you go back and watch my blanket stack video, which is my most watched video of all time, you will see um, every single blanket that I've got, that I had at the time, and um, their stories behind them, the yarn, why I made them, and the emotions that I stitched into them, and the parts of my life that I kind of have retained within them, because each one is a memory, um, each one holds a memory or, of a certain period of my life which uh, is why I still have the amount that I have. One day, when I am grown and I've got a house of my dreams that hopefully I've designed and had made, I'm gonna have a big French amour, and then I'm not sure if I'm gonna have the doors on it with mirror, which I think I will, or the doors off. I'm gonna upcycle it, paint it, and then I'm just gonna have simple shelves in it and I'm going to jam it full of all of the blankets I've ever made. And then my children can go in, they can take them out, they can put them in their bedrooms, they can make blanket forts, their friends can sleep under them, they can snuggle them when they're sad, they can snuggle them when they're happy. And then when I have grandchildren, they'll do the same. That made my heart tug. Um, so I'm hanging on to them because I have plans for them. They have plans for my future. So from the granny square blankets, I then went on to granny square clothing. The first bit of clothing I made where the granny square was enamoured, you can just see it there, it's the brightly coloured granny square. And then I made Inspirited, which is just below it. Um, I made Risen, which is the one below that. In between those two, at the bottom, the purple, I made a granny square jumper, which is to be finished. I've also made this one. That there, is another one that I've designed and I've got so many granny square projects in my mind like cardigans some more dresses I've got summer wear oh my goodness all the granny squares y'all I want to do a granny square collection um, I want to be known as the person that makes creates designs granny square garments granny square garms hashtag that HGDC granny square garms um, I want you to go on that hashtag and just be able to scroll through all these amazing granny squares that everyone's just rocking. So that's what I'm working on. Question five. I don't know why. What is with that gap? It's like this. <laughs> Question five.
Ooh. Okay. I have two. Um, I can't pick between the two. My most used favourite yarn is Double Knit Acrylic Yarn, which I'm pretty much wearing. Um, double Knit Yarn is my go-to weight. It's a good mid-weight yarn. I think in America you call it 8-ply. Um, it is easily accessible. It is within everyone's price range. It's easy to buy, um, both online and in store all around the UK. Even the Pound Shop carries it, and this is actually put together with Pound Shop yarn, the Glitter Black. Um, it's great yarn to practice on, especially when you're designing, because if you frog quite often, um, the more luxury yarns sometimes don't hold up with the continual ripping back, whereas acrylic yarn just keeps on giving. Um, you can get so many different colours, because it is man-made, it is manufactured, they can dye it in whatever colour you desire. It's also mixed with glitter and I have so much of it. Out of my stash, 95% of it, 90% of it is double knit acrylic. I then have double knit with um, mixture blends and then I've got say 5% sock yarn and 5% Aran and Chunky yarn. Um, so yeah, double knit acrylic. If I had to pick a favourite brand, I would say Stylecraft because I use it the most, followed by the Pound Shop and Boys. Um, what else do I use? Audi. If I can get hold of affordable acrylic yarn, I will use it. I love it. It washes well. My granddad's blanket is a double knit acrylic blanket, Granny Squares. Again, you can see it in the blanket stack video. And that was put through industrial washers and dryers when he was in his care home. And it is still holding its shape. It's really soft now. Um, but I mean, I can only imagine that it was washed up to 20 plus times maybe maybe even more because it would disappear and they had to keep things hygienic in there. So um, one of the old ladies would steal it and then they'd find it, wash it, give it back and just repeat. And it's held up, which is great. And that's good, that's like a good uh, quality to have if you're making something for a child or it's gonna have frequent use and you're gonna need to wash it a lot because you can put things like that in the washing machine. I. I'm still a little bit hesitant to put anything I've made in the washing machine but I did wash one of my blankets not long ago and it came out fine, it was fluffy, it smelt great so that is a definite bonus of acrylic yarn as well as all of these different colours. Um, my other favourite yarn is on the other end of the scale and it's luxury indie dyed hand dyed yarn. Um, indie dyed means that they are an independent dyer so they are usually self-employed a one-man band or a family business and they have their own yarn um, line and they buy it and then they dye it themselves and then they sell it and they make their own colourways and there's so much work that goes into it and you know what it's something that's never really appealed to me because I just like to make with the good stuff um, but for all those that make indie dyed yarn, you are heroes because the colours are just amazing. So you can get all different blends. Um, most of my indie dyed yarn, most, who am I kidding? All of my indie dyed yarn is four ply for socks. And most of that is um, superwash merino mixed with um, nylon, which reinforces it so that you don't walk through your socks in effect. Um, and then recently I have gotten some yarn that's got yak in it, bamboo, alpaca, oh, honestly they're so soft, they're so fluffy, they're so squishy. Uh, so I've got Mr B's old number seven, it's 75% um, merino and 25% nylon and then I've got the Hey J hand dyed yarn in this amazingly bright coloured way. Though it's not named, so I think I'm gonna message you Hannah and say, what's this called? Um, it's sparkle yarn, it's 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon and five grams sparkle. Can you see the sparkle? Yes. 
and these are so soft and so luxurious and they have such a different feeling to the, the acrylic yarn. Now because I use this for socks, I have found when I've used acrylic yarn for socks, my feet can't breathe in it and they're really sweaty and really quite uncomfortable. Whereas when I wear a jumper in it, I'm really warm and it's, it's fine, I don't have any problems. Probably because I've got a base layer under it or if um, it, I don't have a base layer, it's because it's a lighter summer garment and it's more movable, more breathable. Um, whereas for socks, I really like the Merino mix because it's really insulating and it feels so soft and good on your feet. So, put those back so that I don't make a complete mess in here. I would definitely recommend if you want to knit socks to splurge on some good stuff but first practice on something like drops um, which is like £2 for five, 550 grams. I can get a pair of socks out of that. Um, so yeah, double knit yarn, luxury indie dyed yarn, my favourites. I just love to be a contradiction, that is just me right there, contradiction. Question six. When I am crocheting or knitting, I like to listen to podcasts. Um, I listen to a lot of music. So I'll be on Spotify, I listen to uh, Vogue Knitting Live, I listen to the Merryweather Council, I listen to CEO, um, The Diary of a CEO by Stephen Bartlett, I listen to motivational podcasts, um, God, there's so many that I'm not even going to list them but that's the sort of things I like to listen to. Um, I also like to just listen to music, new releases, you all know my heart is for Bugsy Malone, he's an amazing business owner and just goals. Um, I also really like to watch things, um, but I will say when it comes to sewing in ends, put something audio on because you will be looking down a lot and you'll get a lot more done. There you go, just giving you tips all the time. Um, podcasts that I like to watch when I'm crocheting or knitting, I would say on YouTube, I'm enjoying watching Ponder and Ply. I always watch Full and Fine. I'm watching a lot on um, having your own business, marketing, branding. Um, I'm always watching things that are teaching me and helping me to learn. And I watch a lot of, um, to be honest, I watch more knitting than I do crochet, but anything that's because there is so much more knitting out there which is why I'm trying to bring you so much more crochet because I know the struggle is real. Another thing I like to do when I'm crocheting is talk to people. I can knit or crochet and talk. Um, I know some people find it rude like I'm not giving them the, giving them my full attention whereas it's kind of like my fidget um, thing that you see some kids have. If I don't knit and crochet, my hands feel lost and they do all these stupid things, and my mind wanders off. So I love to have my knitting or my crochet when I am um, in a social situation and I'm, I'm really happy then. I will spend all night sitting talking to you if I can crochet or knit at the same time. Um, and I also crochet and knit in church throughout service. Um, when we're praying, I put it down. Um, when we're worshipping, I put it down. But as soon as we're sat and we are being preached to, when I'm listening to the message, I sit and I crochet and then I take notes on my phone, which means I can just pick it up, do my notes, put it down, carry on. And church is one of the places that I've got the most of my ends weaved in because it's there, it's all I have to do. There's no other project to pick up, which is, I mean, Obviously I'm listening, there is lots to do, but it's the only project I have to do and so I get loads done. And that's where I've done most of my granny square curtain and these ends. Seven.
I do crochet a lot in public. Um, I crochet in church, as I said, I will crochet on the bus. If we are at a restaurant and I'm waiting for my food, I will crochet. I can crochet at the cinema, not that anyone can see me doing that because I don't need to look to be able to do granny squares or granny stripe. Um, I will crochet on the bus, I'll crochet anywhere. To be honest, I prefer to crochet if I'm with someone. I don't so much enjoy, sometimes when I'm on the bus, I feel like people are really staring. Maybe they're just watching and watching and they're wondering about it. But sometimes I can feel like I, it's drawing too much attention to me. Um, and if I'm out and about and I'm, I'm on my own, I might choose to read rather than crochet. Whereas if there's someone with me, I will definitely be crocheting. But then I can't be with someone and read because that'd be rude, so. Question eight. HDDC started in 2016. I started an Instagram page and um, I decided to make a separate HDDC page rather than posting on my personal Instagram because nobody in my real life other than like my grandmother and my mum appreciated or cared about crochet and I really really wanted to be able to post and find people that liked crochet and would like squeal with joy over what I'd made and say nice things and I'd be able to look at what they've made and get inspiration and so that's why I started um, my Instagram page and that's where the name HDDC came from because it's basically Heather Crochets because that's what it's all about. Um, but even back then I knew that I wanted to start designing my own projects which is why I put Designs Crochet. Um, for a little while I did feel a little bit lost because I wasn't designing and I felt a bit like a fraud. Um, but in order to design you need to learn lots of skills and that's what I've spent quite a bit of time doing. So. I'm now at a point where I'm designing and it feels really, really good. I also had a blog prior to that. Um, I kind of sad that I didn't keep it going, but I've had a blog a couple of times and both times I've just found that it's a lot of energy um, and you don't necessarily get the connection. It's not a two-way return, whereas YouTube, I get more interaction and I get a lot more from it. Um, with Instagram, I found that I got the connection I was looking for a lot, lot more. Um, as I said, I didn't really know anybody in real life that crocheted. So to find all these people online and to be able to connect with them has been the bestest thing ever about HDDC. Question nine. What is with Um, YouTube for me was just quite natural in that I don't mind being in front of the camera. Um, both of my brothers had YouTube channels for their passions, bodybuilding and motorbike racing. And this is my passion, so I wanted to put that out there. Um, also, as I said, when watching podcasts, I found a lot of knitting, but not so many crochet. I really, really wanted that connection. I really, really wanted to find like-minded people and also people like me. Um, I went to a few groups and most of the demographic there were older ladies, the majority of them were white and it was just something they did as like a pastime and that's fine and I met some amazing people but I was thinking where are all the people in my age group? Where are all the people in my demographic? Like where are all the people that want to be designers? Um, and so although I really enjoyed those groups, I kind of felt a bit apart from them and a bit lonely because my mind was thinking differently. Um, so I decided to come to YouTube because then I thought hopefully people will find me and it's been amazing because now I have the bestest tribe and there's so many people out there that appreciate what I do and not only that I get to see what they do because you will tag me in your posts and you're on my Instagram feed and that's so so cool um, so I know I've said it but the best thing about HDDC is the connection to people 
just like you. So thank you so, so much for being here because it's honestly the bestest part. Um, it's one thing when you love doing something, but when you love doing something, but you can't find anyone else that really does, um, you can feel really lonely and feel like a complete weirdo. And I'm used to being different, but I don't enjoy being lonely. So it's so, so good to find you a lot. Um, and then my YouTube channel just started to pick up momentum, which was a bit scary at the start, to be honest, because although I don't mind being in front of the camera, I do have some things that I am self-conscious about. And the more people started to watch it, the more I, I kind of got into my head and was like, what if they think that the very things I don't like about myself they're picking up on, what if they say mean things? Um, that whole self-development, that was a big, it was a big mountain to climb um, and also YouTube takes up a lot, a lot of my time. Um, it can take me like an hour to record, it can then take me two to three hours to edit but then on top of that whatever I've recorded I've had to make to show you um, and so it does take a lot of my time and sometimes life can come along and YouTube gets just shoved. So now we're over the thousand subscriber milestone and hitting other milestones as we go along and I'm celebrating all the small wins it's so much fun um, and I can't imagine ever giving up YouTube now I can't imagine not showing you what I've been working on I can't imagine not seeing what you lot are working on question 10 HDDC plans. I have so many, so many plans. Big, big plans. Um, I want to sell my patterns that I design. I want to have my own clothing line. I want to have my own yarn and boutique store. And then I want my own yarn and boutique mega, mega store. Like the biggest store in the United Kingdom. Just huge. Um, and I've got so many other things feeding into that that I want to do and whenever I think about it it just puts this fire in my soul and I have to do it so every single day I'm waking up and I'm just I'm just so focused on what can I do to get myself to the next step what can I do to get HDDC out there and it's really cool because I started YouTube at such an early stage in all of this that you literally get to see from day one and then you're gonna see how far this all goes which is amazing. Um, so right now, focusing on getting out my patterns that I design. Um, I've got Adventure which is on Ravelry and the next ones are being written up as we speak um, so I can send them to the tech editor. I've got new patterns that I'm working on. So much good stuff. Okay Tribe, that was a quick about me. Um, I want to just say thank you so much for you all being here, spending this time with me. I absolutely love it. Um, I can't thank you enough for spending time with me. I really really want to know all about you as well so Drop me a comment below, put your name in there, where you're from and tell me uh, when you started crocheting and what your first project is or what you're making now. Let me know all about you. I am most active in my comments so if you want to speak to me drop a comment down there. I reply to every single one. I love having a chat with you all. One thing I will say is when you reply to my comments I don't get notified about it so if I don't see them I'm really really sorry and if I've, if, if Blah, blah, blah. If I've ignored your replies to my replies, just put it as a separate comment and I will get to it. It's just some weird quirk of YouTube. It doesn't say that I've had a reply um, and it doesn't show up unless I click on your first comment and then go into replies and I, I don't really check them. So YouTube sort it out and if I've ignored something, just copy it in and I will reply to it. Um, I'm also active on Instagram and I'm also active on Ravelry. You can find me as HG Designs Crochet and I'm also really active on Patreon. So I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for being here and until I see you next time, happy making moments and memories. Look at that.